right now on MasterChef. Girls versus the boys. The final four go to war. Don't worry about it. No, I'm going to worry about it because it doesn't taste good. That is vile. Still with a health warning. In a battle of the sexes. Get some steaks on there. The easy cowboy. What do you think you've got in your team that the blue team doesn't have? <laughs> Two winners. Ooh. Bitter rivals clash. The things you tell me are I already know. Four become three and blood is spilled. Ah! Damn it! This is the final four. This is an opportunity for me to finally live my dream and open up this bistro casual restaurant in Malibu, and hopefully I'll be the last man standing. Come on down, guys. My dream is to become a food critic. I want to write about the little dive bars or the hole in the wall. This is the turning point in my life where I can make food my new lifestyle. Welcome to the final four of MasterChef. As you can see behind you, there are only two stations set up tonight. You'll be cooking in this challenge in two teams of two. Win this challenge and the two members of your team will earn a spot in the top three of MasterChef. Lose and you'll go head to head with your teammate for elimination. Courtney, you had the best dish in the last elimination challenge. So you're going to be picking first and deciding who is on each team. Everyone, except Courtney, please step to the side. I have a really hard decision to make. I almost want to think long-term, like who can I take down in a pressure test, but I want to win this challenge, so I'm thinking who can I work with to excel immediately. All right, Courtney, select your teammate for tonight. I'm going to choose Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> And we're gonna kick ass. <laughs> wow. The girls versus the boys. <laughs> I get cutter and boom, there goes my dream. It turns into a nightmare. Put them on. Oh, I hate the fact that Leslie is my teammate. Hopefully, he can take his head out of his ass for two minutes so we can win this. Leslie, how does it feel now with Cutter? It's fine. We're going against them. It's not him and me, because that'll happen if we lose. And I don't think he wants to lose, and I definitely don't want to lose. In the equipment room, there are four boxes. One from each of the four states that you come from. Each team has two boxes to choose from. Courtney and Elizabeth, your choices will be Pennsylvania and New York. Leslie and Cutter, your choices will be California and Texas. Each team has to go into the equipment room and choose one box from one of your home states. Now, using the box that you choose tonight, each team will have one hour to make us each a restaurant quality appetizer and entree that highlight some of those regional ingredients. OK, off you go. Come on. Let's go, guys. All right, so what do you think's in your box? It might be more towards the seafood line, okay. and I'm thinking you're more to definitely towards the beef. The New York box is going to have stuff from the ocean, because it borders yep. the ocean, and Pennsylvania's got a lot of, like, Amish country yes, and a lot of land. really good, yeah. The steaks and stuff is more forgiving than seafood I if agree. we screw up with seafood. I agree. Probably I'm more comfortable with the California box, but I don't think it could be that much different in the Texas box. And at this point, I don't want to start any arguments with Cutter, because if we start fighting, we're not going to get anything achieved. Let's do this. We got it. It doesn't matter which box we choose. It matters if we can agree on what we're going to cook and stick to it. Because if you start changing things around, that's when everything falls apart. Good job. Well done. Right, ladies, so you've gone for the box, the state of Pennsylvania. Why, Elizabeth? Pennsylvania has a lot of, like, really humble, kind of farm-fresh ingredients yeah, that we definitely. felt like we could really elevate. Right, open up and tell us what you've got in there. Let's do it. Okay. Oh, wow. I'm so excited. There's some Amish cheese, there's beautiful pears, potatoes, some Polish sausage, rainbow trout, venison, apple butter, cabbage, do you both feel that you made the right choice? Yes. Yes, Chef. Gentlemen, the state of Texas. Open your box. Ready? Ah, looking good. Cutter, tell us what's in there. 
Well, we got a little catfish. We have a prime rib. We have baby back ribs. We have some ancho chili, some molasses, some grapefruit, some corn, and of course, butter. Incredible. Now that you know what you have to cook with, please head to your stations. A pressure test that is just comprised of me versus Courtney is basically my nightmare. We need to win so that we don't have to face each other. It's the final four now. So our standards are higher than ever. Do those ingredients and those states justice. Yes, yes chef. chef. Your one hour starts now. Oh, these pears look amazing. Yeah, I want to incorporate them in our appetizer. Yep. Catfish is a trash fish. I mean, it's yeah. good, but it's, it's mostly fried. It's just how do we elevate a fried catfish, you know? Mm. So the Blue Teens box is Texas. They have some well-known proteins. What would you do? The catfish is something I would stay away from. you got to focus on that beef. It's incredible. In the red box, I would do a beautiful Waldorf salad mm -hmm. with a poached trout. Flake the trout over the Waldorf salad. And then entree, that venison. I mean, get that in a beautiful rub. Done with some caramelized mushrooms and braised red cabbage. Right, Blue Team, describe the appetizers. We're going to do spare ribs with a grapefruit and molasses barbecue sauce topping and a corn salsa. Lovely. So something lighter for the entree? I think we're going to go ribeye. Right. Explain the ribeye, please. Pretty much salt and pepper. Get a nice sear on it. Keep it medium rare. It's a steak. It's nothing more. What's the garnish? I'm going to do a potato, carrot, and a turnip puree. Good. Completely get through to the top three. Oh, yes. We're sending those girls home. I'd love to chit-chat, but I got to go. All right, guys. What's the dish now? Tell me. The appetizer mm -hmm. is two slices of the trout over poached pear with an apple butter ginger beer sauce. Do you either have to nail that, or it's going to be kind of amateurish and terrible? What about the entree? The entree is a venison medallion marinated in root beer. And how are you going to cook them? We're going to pan sear them, so they're basically like medium rare. So these are super tiny. You know how long it's going to take to sear these in the pan? Not very long. Good luck. 30 minutes remaining. Red team, blue team, come on. Speed up, guys. Ah, What? it. Damn it! Cutter! Come on, speed up, guys! Ah! What? Medic! Damn it! Cutter! I'm chopping my onion, and I just wasn't paying attention, and the hill of the knife came down, and I thought I'd cut my damn finger off. We're here, we're here, we're here. We're here. Don't look down. Look, don't look down. It's not as bad as you think. You've taken the nail off, and you're good to go. OK. Right now, I'm carrying the team. I, he's busy with the medics, and I just got to keep moving. Do or die. This is do or die. Living up to your name. Let's go. Ugh. You all right? Uh, yeah, it hurts. I ain't a lot. This is turning into more of like a pear sauce, which I like. It's really smooth. It needs a little bit of color, like a little bit of cinnamon coriander. It's not that smooth. I don't think that's good at all. No? No, okay. it's weird. I mean, why don't we just make an, er an earthy herb mash? Okay, we gotta hurry. I'm hurrying for, I mean... I know, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm talking to encourage. Yeah, I know, but, like, I'm hurrying. I get a little impatient with Courtney because she has a very irritating habit of micromanaging me. There's a lack of trust there. You gotta get a move on on that. I really think biscuits would be a good idea. Make a decision, Cutter. I can't. I'm in the middle of three steaks right now. I'm not asking now. to. I'm just, I'm just trying to talk to you, man. We're in the top four, Cutter. Start acting like a chef. Make decisions. No more babysitting. No more breastfeeding. Done. You got any other ideas? Let me take care of my steaks. OK. 15 minutes remaining. This is a big deal. Let's make sure it's enough for three people. Courtney, sometimes the things you tell me are I already know, and I just need you to tell me things that I don't know. Uh-oh. The little reduction you made with the apple butter and stuff, yeah. what's that for, Courtney? The appetizer. It's already done. It's been sitting over there for like 30 minutes. Oh. Oh, dear. Right, Red Team, what in the hell's going on? We both made sauces that we didn't know the other one was making for the same thing. Is this is this working? Courtney just keeps telling me things I already know instead of... Yeah, well, stand up for yourself. Then. I know. I, just, I, I told her I wasn't serving that puree, so we're remaking a mash. I mean, the puree sucks. Um, I could give it to a baby. I know, I don't like it, but it's oh. not what we want. That is vile. 
we're going to lose to Leslie and Cutter, and one of us is going to go home in a pressure test if we cannot just get past all of the BS and get the food on the plate. Uh, God, this thing needs reduced. It's not reducing. It's all fat. Fat will reduce. Oh, Leslie, what did you put in here? There's some steak fat in there. From, we're rendering down the bones and wine. Get any liquid yeah. out of it. I'm going to start over with the red sauce real yep. quick. Highest temp. Just get it done. Don't worry about it. Just get it well, done. No, I'm going to worry about it because it doesn't taste good. Uh, blue team. I'm worried because their sauce that they're reducing it's is fine. all fat. Leslie Second. made that sauce. Cutter has stepped in to save it. Put some flour in it. I did. It's just too much of wine. It ain't burned off yet. Red team, blue team. Last two minutes. Speed up. Let's just get this together because we're planning together. Courtney and Elizabeth, you've got to work and talk at the same time. Yes, whether you like hurt. it or not, because you're not going to finish. You got the sauce? Yeah, but let's just use very little because it's very strong. Go, guys. I think it's absolutely stunning. Thank you. Get them steaks on there. Ha uh -huh. Easy, easy, cowboy. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and stop. Hands in the air. Well done. Good job. Right, it's time to find out how you did. Starting with a red team. Please bring up your appetizers. Elizabeth and I made a rebound from our lack of communication and struggle to work together. And we at least have dishes that we will stand behind 100%. Uh, what have you described the dish, please? It's pan-seared Pennsylvania rainbow trout with a savory poached pear, Amish cheddar, black walnuts, and an apple butter vinaigrette. First of all, it doesn't look like any appetizer I've seen in any restaurant I've ever been to. Feels like it's something left over from a finger buffet gone wrong. Where was the last time you ate Pennsylvania trout and pear together? I haven't. You haven't. Elizabeth, maybe? Uh, I have not, Chef. Such a weird combination. Um, trout actually tastes quite nice, cooked beautifully, crisp on the skin. But honestly, ladies, just the fact that you were butting heads it tastes exactly like the performance. Underwhelming. I expect more. We always say, really, that cheese and fish don't go hand in hand. The pear looks like it's the star here. And then over here, I have two fish sticks. Like, where did this come from? We were both just doing things alongside each other and not really coming together as a unit. So, whose dish is this? I'll take ownership for that. The pear and the sauce and the cheese on its own could be a nice cheese course. The fish doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. Really, really surprised. I appreciate that Courtney fesses up to having thought of the appetizer, but I should have stood up and said, this pear trout thing is a terrible idea. I have a better one. But I didn't. I trusted her, and that was so dumb. OK, blue team, appetizer, please. Walking up the judges, I'm feeling good right now. My appetizer plate, I think the ribs look great. Cook perfectly, sauce tastes great. We might actually have a shot at winning this thing. Uh, guys, what the f is that? Uh, guys, what the f is that? Please describe the dish. Rack of ribs with a Texas rub and a molasses grapefruit glaze and corn and onion to go with it. So visually, Russian quality, it's not. I think of some of the dishes you've plated so far in this competition has been really beautiful. But I've never seen such a depressing corn in all my life. Any citrus in there? Is any lemon, lime? Uh, salt, pepper. Well, that's great. Jal jalapeno. Oh, hey, hold on a minute. Thank you. No, no, seriously. The chef. There's <laughs> salt Golly. and pepper in the corn. <laughs> Sounds delicious. You know that's not good. Who cooked the ribs? I did. Pressure cooked them first, and then added a little sear on the grill afterwards to get a little char. The actual ribs are tender. Delicious, melting in your mouth, but we're not a barbecue house. It's the MasterChef kitchen. I don't think you've shown off any of the ingredients properly. Man. kind of caveman food. You had, what, 50 different ingredients in that box? You guys used ribs and corn. What are you thinking? You had rice, quinoa, 
peppers. You had the staple pantry. You could have made a biscuit. I suggested that, but I never got any info back. Did you say not to make the biscuit? I never he just heard never answered a word me. about any biscuit. Is this your recipe? Mm-hmm. Yummy. Ribs are good, but we're at the final four. We ask you to take the spirit of your home state, Texas, elevate that to a restaurant quality dish, and you guys put corn on a plate with some ribs. I don't know what else to say. Sorry. I gave the big Texas man a shot to put down his best dish on the plate, and that was a disaster. If I go to the pressure test because of Cutter, I'm definitely taking him down. Red team, entrees, let's go. Describe the dish, please. It's seared venison tenderloin medallions over an herbed Yukon gold potato mash with sautéed button mushrooms and an apple butter reduction. Finally, some beauty. Love the idea of the medallions. Get a little bit of finesse. Who cooked the venison? I did, chef. Mm -hmm. And we got a great sear. Mm. Wow. The cook on the venison is perfect. Thank you. But this mash is like a mouthful of grit, lumpy as anything. Here's the thing, venison, nails, sauce, delicious, mushrooms, delicious. The great shame tonight is the mash. You nailed the cooking on the venison. It's very good. It's seasoned well. But the plate definitely wants some sort of veg component. I and mean, this is just steak and potatoes, basically, okay. right? Yeah. And then what it's missing for me is your collaboration. Yeah. You're not hitting the stride. I would expect for perhaps the two best cooks we've ever seen in the MasterChef kitchen. And it's just a little disappointing. Thank you. It's not a great review, and it's not our best performance. We know we didn't cook our best today. I'm just hoping that Cutter and Leslie screwed up more. Blue team, entrees, please. I'm looking at my entree, and I'm happy with it. I'm hoping that my ribeye and my puree is going to be a lot better than the ribs. Tell me exactly what it is. A uh, ribeye steak with a potato, turnip, and carrot puree with a red wine reduction. Now, I was watching you guys cook, and I noticed, first thing, you take the bone off. I always think that's a mistake because it helps keep it moist. That said, the fact that you put it in a pan and started using it and cooking with it, I was like, awesome. Is that what ended up being used for the sauce that we saw over on your station? Yeah, I cooked the bones, and then I deglazed with then the Then you deglazed. Yes. Okay, so you got to render that. Fat first. Well, we did all that work and technique I, yeah, and then I, threw I can't, it away. I can't do everything. I, you yeah. know, I, I thought he had it on his corner and, and that was that. So, so you're guilty with that. <laughs> Apparently. Wow. If you can't see the fat in the pan, I mean, I, I can't. I had to I restart a whole new sauce because I, there was too much fat. You know, I let you do your own thing and this is what happens. So, really, it is okay. what it is. Never so, your fault, is it? Take some responsibility for yourself. I can't help you with the sauce if it's going down at your end and you told me you got it. Steak is great, good flavor. The mash, there's too much of it on the plate and it just needs seasoning. The hero on that dish is the steak and luckily the hero's rocking. Thank you. The sear on the ribeye is perfect. What am I gonna get when I cut this open? Medium rare. When you got white fat that is raw in the center, it hasn't been cooked long enough. Ribeye tastes delicious. Seasoning's delicious. It's just such a shame that it's undercooked. Vegetables underneath are embarrassing. You two are smart, talented individuals. As a couple, lacking harmony beyond belief. Thank you. I love how Leslie tries to throw me under the bus. We're not meant to work together, and he's going to do whatever he can to make himself look good and make me look bad. Uh, red team, blue team, please come round to the front. Thank you. Being beat by Cutter and Leslie seems like one of the worst things imaginable, but not as bad as having to face a pressure test against Courtney. Some highs, some lows across that challenge, let me tell you. But one thing that became clearly evident, four of you are incredibly talented home cooks individually. We don't get the same standard when paired as a team. One team was marginally better. The winning team is, congratulations. The 
winning team, the team that will be safe from elimination tonight and will catapult themselves into the top three. Congratulations. Red team, Elizabeth and Courtney, well done. You are through to the top three. Thank you. Thank you. Please, congratulations, head up to the gallery. Thank you. I know I made it in the top three and I'm really proud of myself, but I'm disappointed in how I got here. Elizabeth and I could have won by a landslide and instead we won by the skin of our teeth. Leslie and Kata, you know what this means. I'm heading into my sixth pressure test and there is no way in hell that I'm going down without a fight. I work best on the pressure. I have seven children five grandchildren you want pressure put those all in one house every pressure test has been important but this is personal i'm just tired of leslie's malibu oh man it's time to go home you're gonna battle head to head in a dreaded pressure test where one will leave at the end of it and one will join courtney and elizabeth in the top three leslie you survived five pressure tests. Yes, um, I'll hopefully I'll survive my number six. Well, no one's ever got to number six, so... Do you want to know what? Six is my lucky number, and today's my sixth test. I'll survive, and I'll, I'll be up there with the girls. It all comes down to this. Cutter versus Leslie. Texas versus California. The oil man versus the stay-at-home dad. It's all right, you can laugh. I, I can afford to stay home. <laughs> oh, you're such a joke. You know what, cut it, put it on the plate, mister. Let's go. Okay, Let's go. I'm ready to rock and roll. Texas versus California, I'm loving this. You know what, it's, it's time to shut up and put up. In the previous challenge, you chose to cook dishes using ingredients from Cutter's state box, which was from Texas. For this upcoming pressure test, you'll be using the ingredients from the home state box that you rejected. That's right. Fine with me. Let's go. Please, both of you, go into the equipment room and bring out the California State Box. Yes, sir. I think that Leslie probably has the upper hand in this challenge. He has this crazy will and determination, and he clearly has skills because he's like all-time master chef, global pressure test champion. I am absolutely betting on Cutter to win this. He's going to be cooking from his soul and using his brain, and I believe that Cutter can do it. Carefully open up the box and see what you missed out on. I'm happier than a pig in Texas. I should be familiar with everything that's in this box. Bring it on. There you have some amazing ingredients from California. Exquisite, fresh sea urchin plucked straight from the Pacific Ocean. Jidori chicken, bred and raised in California and sought after by chefs around the world. Lastly, beautiful, fresh yellowfin tuna caught right off the coast. Joe, what are you drawn to in that box? Without a doubt, the sea urchin. I would take that sea urchin and make a dish that's very close to my culinary heritage. Sea urchin risotto. I love risotto, I love uni. Together they create one of the perfect marriages of land and sea. I could never pass up a Californian sea urchin. Now, Graham, what are you drawn to? The star of that box to me is that Jidori chicken. I do a simple preparation honoring the influence of that Asian culture here in California. Jidori chicken teriyaki with bok choy and forbidden rice. It's accented by that sweet, salty combo with the soy and honey. Very, very delicious. Now, I would fight to get my hands on that delicious, stunning yellowfin tuna. I would make tuna niçoise. It's beautiful. A perfectly seared piece of tuna on a delicious, fragrant salad with potatoes, green beans, and a beautiful garnish. Soft, boiled quail's eggs bound together with a light vinaigrette that ties it all together. Three stunning, beautiful dishes all inspired from that amazing California box. Now, this won't be a simple challenge. Gentlemen, tonight, to get into the top three, you won't simply just replicate one of these dishes. Cutter and Leslie, you will be replicating all three of these highly sophisticated 
dishes. And we are looking for exact replicas. Oh, take my apron now. <laughs> I mean, it's just, you want me to do what? You will have just 90 minutes to make us all three incredibly challenging dishes. Okay, both of you, head to your station. This is going to be the brawl of the century. I'm done with the talk. Talk is cheap. I can't wait to cut Cutter out of this competition. Do I want to beat him? Hell yeah, I want to beat him. Am I good enough to beat him? Of course I am. My life in the MasterChef kitchen is at stake. I'm ready. Let's do it. Cutter, any last words for Leslie? Nothing at all. Leslie, any last advice for Cutter? Yeah, I hope he likes Texas. This is one pressure test that I am dying to witness. May the best man win. Are we ready? Yes, Chef. Yes, Chef. Your 90 minutes starts now. Let's go, Cutter. We have never seen a battle as intense as this yeah. one. I mean, get rid of the cooking. It's Ollie versus Fraser. This is their finale tonight in the cup. I really don't care about Lizzie right now. I think everybody knows that I'm a better cook and a better person. You got it, Cutter. Come on, let's go. Just come down and help them. Everybody can talk all they want, but at the end of the day, you got to walk the walk, okay? If he's a better cook. Yeah. What goes through your head as a chef when you have to put up yep. those three dishes in 90 minutes? The big issue tonight is the timing. The first thing you do is nail the chicken. You've got to get that preparation of the chicken done because that takes the longest to cook. And then, number two, is the preparation on the yellowfin tuna, the potatoes, to get the green beans ready. The last one, the big one, is the risotto. You start the risotto with literally 25 minutes to go. The difficulty tonight is plating all those three dishes at the same time. Just over 25 minutes gone. 64 minutes remaining. Wait, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. Why is Kota started to do Zosa? Doesn't make any sense. It's the last thing that you would do here. Yeah, over an hour to go. He's literally working backwards. Right. Oh, this is the worst dish ever. Cutter. What's going on, Chef? How you doing? Good. So, risotto. Please tell me this is a practice one. Yeah, because I don't have a clue what I'm doing. Okay, no. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. I don't, I don't have a clue what I'm doing here. All right, settle down. Listen, this is the last thing you want to do. Oh, and it can't hold. <laughs> Are you kidding me? We just started, and he's screwing up already. The, the, I'm not, I'm yeah, the, that's going to scare the out of me. This is only the beginning of what's going to be your end. <laughs> Cutter, please tell me this is a practice one. I don't have a clue what I'm doing. Okay, no. I mean, I'll be honest, I don't, I don't have a clue what I'm doing here. All right, settle down. Listen. <laughs> This is something that takes 22 minutes to finish, start to finish. This is the last thing you want to do. Oh, and it can't hold. Don't get stressed out. Take two minutes out of your 90 to kind of get re-centered. Yes, sir. You can do this. Like... Halfway, guys. 45 minutes gone. 45 minutes remaining. This is intense each dish one at a time, no problem at all. But three dishes in 90 minutes, that's scary. Cutter, he's got his green beans already cooked for the tuna swab. He's got the rice on, so he's moving. And what about you and your chicken? That is a tough one. So the big thing is making sure that you don't leave it in the oven and dry it out. But the difficulty tonight surely has to be that teriyaki. That's the big elephant in the room tonight, because they yep. think it's a glaze, and the power of that glaze right. is really important. It's not. It's the no. delicacy of that glaze. Exactly. There you go. Get a nice bath ready. Come on. He's going to let him lose on his own. Not with his mother up there. All right, Lizzie. Yep. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. How's the chicken? Pretty much done. I just mm -hmm. got to uh, put the teriyaki sauce on it, and we're in the money. Why do the girls want cutter in the top Because they, they know they can beat him. <laughs> Me, me, I beat them all. I beat yeah. them already, so they're nervous. Yeah, do you think they're that's nervous. what it is? Oh, what, are you kidding me? He's yeah. a shoe-in for them. Get over yourself. Who's your cheerleaders? Who's There's my no cheerleaders? One, me, no myself, is... and I. All three of them. Right. <laughs> good luck. Thank you. There you go. That looks good. 65 minutes gone. 25 minutes remaining. It's getting to the crunch time. 
yellow fin tuna niçoise is very difficult to pull off. I mean, from the potatoes, the green beans, the textures, and then that creaminess of the soft boiled quail's eggs. But for me, the secret is in the tuna. Searing it long enough, on each side, a couple of tablespoons of vinegar on top mm -hmm. as it cools down, it'll marinate that tuna. Who has the edge on the tuna today? Leslie is so organized, and everything's done A, B, C, D, and it's about assembling it. My problem with cutter is the fact that he's slightly manhandling the ingredients, a little bit too clumsy. Gently. Oh, come on. Tuna cutter. Fascinating now, both now starting with the risotto. The trick here is certainly getting the best of luxurious, creamy risotto on your palate. Each grain of rice perfectly swollen. Stir, stir, stir. With the creamiest protein of the sea, which is sea urchin. It's really just about cream and cream and cream and cream. Because the risotto is starting to look good. Mm -hmm. That's pretty damn good Texas risotto right there. I don't care who you are. Cutter is looking like he's really in control right now. Two minutes remaining. You've got to start plating. Come on, speed up. We want three dishes replicated. Focus now. Finesse. This is a pressure test times three. Yeah. I need all three plates down to the front within the next 75 seconds. It really is neck and neck now. Anyone's game. Let's go. Get it on, get it on. We can't add any time. Ten, run, run, run. move cutter, we can play eight, run, you got seven, it. six, five, four, three, two, one, and stop. Woo! Hands in the air. Good job. Wow. Oh, I forgot my eggs. <sighs> Leslie, how you feeling? A little concerned. I forgot my eggs for the uh, Niswa salad. Could have been plated better. Cutter, how are you feeling? Awesome. Out of the three dishes, which ones do you think you've nailed? One, two, and three. You're pumped, aren't you? Who's going through to the top three? Me, for sure. Let's find out. I'm feeling great. I mean, my plates are looking exactly like what the judges put up there. These big old bear paws did a lot of finesse today. OK. So, risotto, one of them is definitely has a superior aesthetic. Leslie, what do you think about his risotto? Uh, uh, it looks pretty bad. All right, let's deal with cutters first. The flavor is very good. Leslie. How much wine did you put in here? Uh, uh, I would say about a cup, maybe. Thanks, guys. Joe, who had the best risotto? Well, one had a better cook on the rice, but was over seasoned. One was undercooked, but the seasoning was spot on. The winning risotto was Leslie's. Thank you, Chef. I won that hands down. My risotto looked exactly the way they put it on the plate. All right, now on to the Jidori chicken teriyaki. It always hinges on taste, but you have to take into consideration the presentation. Cutter, what's your assessment of the two plates? Uh, visually, I feel like I uh, copied yours probably 90% correct. And what about Leslie's? Uh, wrong plate, no sauce, bok choy is cut very long, and uh, not a good crust on his chicken. Cutter, we'll begin with you. What do you think? I think it looks pretty good. Leslie, what do you think? Looks dry to me. OK. Well, let's taste. How long was this in the oven? Maybe 12, 15 minutes. Leslie. Yes. Doesn't seem to have as much of a glaze on it. You didn't get that in? Didn't get it in. Good job to both of you. Thank you. Oh, it's really, really close. Graham, the teriyaki chicken. 
You nailed it. Both were overcooked. One more than the other. One person's sauce was the right consistency. The other was missing off the plate. The best Jidori chicken teriyaki belonged to... Graham, the teriyaki chicken. Who nailed it? Both were overcooked. One more than the other. The best Jidori chicken teriyaki belonged to... Cutter. Good job. Congrats. Thank you. Now it all comes down to the Niswa salad. I'm sweating a little. This is it. Top three or go home. Um, Cutter, how did you cook the tuna? I put salt and pepper on it first, let it rest, seared it on both sides, and then sliced it. The tuna. I have a big problem with that. Oh, it's sort of badly seared, dense, raw in the center. Quail eggs are cooked beautifully. Potatoes cooked nicely. You've got so much going for you. But the hero, um, cut badly, uh, delivered in a, an unfortunate way. Thank you. Leslie, visually, does that excite you? No, it's kind of thrown on the plate. Uh, no quail's eggs? Um, they're in my pot. Behind I, you? Uh, yes, behind me. Uh, it looks clumsy. Yes. It I doesn't agree. look the most appetizing. No, it's not. Talking to you about the vinaigrette. It's uh, olive oil, shallots, lemon, and uh, Dijon mustard. Mm -hmm. Tuna, cooked beautifully. Vinaigrette, delicious. Potatoes, slightly overcooked. Quail's eggs, AWOL. Really hard, two very strong efforts. This, right now, is neck and neck. I want to make it to the top three so bad. I mean, I've came this far. I know I'm a better cook than Leslie is. Neck and neck, one nail the risotto, one nail the chicken, and the tuna is even. If it really comes down to the tuna, which one should I yeah, better? Cut his tuna way in the cook. Under? Way in the cook. I was a little bit more raw on my tuna, but I thought I nailed Chef Ramsay's as far as the look. Leslie's plate looks like crap. He didn't even complete the dish. Leslie forgot the eggs, though. I know, there's no yolk to add the richness. Yeah. Now, visually, it looks a mess. It's all over the place. Yeah. Does he have a better looking plate than me? Sure, he's got his little olives over here, he's got his tomatoes over here, his tuna looks like in the middle here. It's overall, it's about the flavor. I'm sorry. Yeah, very, very close. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we're happy. <sighs> this is a very difficult moment for both of you, and equally for us. The person with the winning Niswa's salad. The person who is now in the top three of MasterChef. Congratulations. Leslie. Thank you, Chef. Well done. Thank you. You nailed it. Great seasoning on the vinaigrette. No quail's eggs. Big deal. I can live with that. Because the hero of the dish was the tuna. Congratulations. Go and join Congratulations. the girls on the balcony. Congratulations. Thank you. Cutter, you have true grit. You have true determination. And you've done an amazing job. Thank you. Cutter, how's the journey been for you? Tell you what, man, it's been a roller coaster. Uh, I came in here just knowing how to cook a few things really good, but learned so much from you guys. You've been brilliant. I put my heart on plate every time, so I can tell you. Every time. I appreciate everything, man. Damn, I appreciate it, Leslie. That was good competition. That's all I wanted. You showed every home cook out there that anything is possible. Thank you. Well, come here, big boy. Say goodbye. All right, man. Back to Texas. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Really, I do. Chef, come in here. <laughs>
Hold Hold Hey, good luck to you, sir. My hat's off to you. You are the better chef. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Take, take it easy, guys. Take care, bud. I've represented my family, my friends, and my state very well, and I can walk out with my head held high. I came into Master Chef as a small fish in a big pond. Cotter. Come through, baby. Yes. <laughs> and I grew. Let's go, hurry up. They're waiting. They're waiting. Whoa. Thank you. Whoa. I got to just work with the three best guys in the industry. Wow. The most beautiful thing that you've put on a plate. Well, thank you. You cooked this heart about as good as it could be cooked. Very, very impressive. The love and teaching that Chef Ramsay gave to me. He never quit believing in me. You may have a face like a British bulldog tuna wasp, but you do cook like an angel. You learn from the past, you live for today, and you dream about tomorrow. And here on Master Chef, I live the dream. Cut a brewer, baby. <laughs> Next time, it's the MasterChef semifinal. As the three best home cooks in America take on the season's most intimidating challenge. 50 chefs representing 50 states. Wow. It's a fight for a place in the final two. The pressure is on. I love it. I put that on my menu. As the world's biggest cooking competition nears its finale to crown a champion. The winner of this year's MasterChef is... On the potato, two potato.